intermediate level of the Wenchuan system. Tom Kyo in Cantonese again means searching the bridge. Let's analyze what does that really mean. Okay, Tom, searching. A lot of people look at it as searching the bridge as though you're looking for your opponent's bridge, such as a hand or feet. But in essence, you must look within yourself. So you are actually searching your own bridge. Everyone have two hands and two legs. So what does that mean in training? Is that you're looking for the proper body conditions, body structures, and uh, coordination to go along with it. Because now that you have to learn how to move within the motions, within the movements, if your structure breaks down, then you're going to have a problem. So therefore, you're looking for your own bridge. For example, if my foot is certain distance, if I step, I'm going to maintain that certain distance. I'm not going to be changing that distance. So in essence, I'm looking for those bridges. So that's what searching means. Q means bridge. So you can look at that. Tom Q is a bridge that takes you from Silim Tao to Bilji. Okay, from developmental stage to application stage. So that is what the bridge is all about. Tom Q introduced a lot of new techniques. So let's break it down and look at each area. Uh, first, we have what we call stances. Okay? In Silum Tao, you have Yi Ji Kim Yong Ma, which allow you to develop very strong balance, allow you to sink the weight to have a very strong stability. But in the application stage, balance and stability is not enough. You must learn how to move. So balance and mobility. So the first stance in Tam Q is what we call Yao Ma, Zuo Ma. When you pivot, Left foot, so both feet is parallel, okay? This become Yao Ma, means right side stance. Zuo Ma, left side stance. So this is the first introduction of right stance and left stance. So because human beings are symmetrical, we don't really, in a, in a Wing Chun system, we don't really look at the front and back as much as right, and left, right, and left. So at this stage, you can still use both hands and both feet. So, Yao Ma, Zuo Ma, right side stance, left side stance. So we have what we call side stance. Next stance, we have what we call back stance, okay? Basically, it's when you step forward, when you have a foot that is stepping forward, and then the other foot follows. This is what we call back stance. So let's look at it from the side. Okay, EG Kim Yong Ma is uh, what we call a basic stance where all other stances come from. So if you pivot one foot out, side stance. So my orientation is right and left. Now if I turn my whole body facing this way, now this becomes a back stance. So there's a difference in how you face that determines the difference in the stances. Why? Because in essence, the structure is the same. Okay, the structure for side stance in the legs, the same structure as you are doing the back stance. Okay, again, in order to apply your tools in combat, okay, in a combat is very sophisticated environments. You must do something that is natural, and you must do something that is simple. So everything within Wing Chun is economy of motion and simple and direct. So we don't have uh, too many uh, variations in the techniques because that way you can really apply it in actual self-defense. So those two, Yao Ma, Zuo Ma, Hao Ma, Hao Ma, consists of uh, two basic new stances in the Tam Kyu level. Next, we're going to go into footwork. Again, uh, you can look at stances as like the beginning and the ending of every motion within the body. Because once you stop, you're in some kind of stances. But in uh, actual situations, in application, your body is never stop in motion. It's always constantly moving. So mobility is one of the most, uh, most important 
uh, attributes in the TOMQ level. So now let's look at the mobility, which consists of footwork. In TOMQ, we have three basic footwork as an introduction. First is based on the side stances, yao ma, zuo ma, okay? When you advance to the side, okay, we call it bracing motions. We call this side step as a bracing, okay? The purpose is that you want to be able to go out or go in between your opponent's attack, okay? Uh, let's look at the, what we call outside bracing. You step to the side and brace back in. Step to the side, brace back in. Okay, against a straight line attack, you might want to avoid that energy. So therefore, you step out and come back to the center. That's what we call outside bracing. Next, you have the reverse called inside bracing. Attack coming from outside, you have an advantage in the inside. So you turn and brace. Turn and brace. Turn and brace. Okay. Again, let's look at those two bracing. Okay, you have brace out. You have brace in. So one is step, turn for the outside. Step, turn. You go out and then back in. The other one is turn and step. Turn and step which is inside bracing, okay? Those footwork allow you to make the proper angle adjustments with the minimum of uh, motions, okay? St staying consistent with the economy of motion, okay? So you have side bracing. Next, we have what we call big ma, means to press forward. In Wen Chun, as you advance, you have a lot of basic technique, very effective, okay? Such as the hands, okay? Fire like a machine gun. So therefore, you must have footwork to support that. Because you can't have a hand that is traveling, throwing six, seven, eight punches per second, and then the footwork is stepping slow like that. So you must, you must have a footwork that matches the hand speed. So this big ma not only allow you to travel forward, but allow you to make the small shuffle step very, very fast. Okay? So allow you to constantly eating up your opponent's space by pressing it. That's why we call this big ma. Okay, again, step, slide, step, slide. Okay, so the body structure is the same as the side stance. Okay, so one more time. You can see this is what we call big ma, stepping and slide. Okay. Uh, big ma is the front foot advance, back foot follows. Okay, the last one, it's called biu ma, okay? Biu in uh, Wen Chun means to thrust, okay? It's a strong motion involved the whole body. So how is that being applied? When you advance with the back foot going straight in, okay? It's a full step, which normally carries more momentum, more energy. So as a thrust, we go forward, okay? So when you have a back foot that advance, go straight out. Okay, it's called thrusting. So you have basic fundamental footwork being introduced at this level with the side steps, front step, okay, both with the front foot or build with the back foot. So those are basic fundamental steps that allow you to have wheels on your cilium tau. Okay, so mobility plus the body unity of cilium tau. Now you have seen the stances and the footwork. Let's look at some of the new hand techniques, arms technique within the TOMQ level. In an offensive uh, system like Wen Chun, okay, every part is used. The hands, the forearm, and the elbow. So in the TOMQ, one of the first techniques being introduced is builds out forward, which expresses the forearm energy. And you have what we call Pai Zhang, okay? It's it's so an elbow slice technique. So now you've been introduced an elbow technique called Pai Zhang. Then you have some other uh, techniques that goes
back into the punching. Okay? Most of the time when Chen, people look at it as a straight line system. You always go straight. But in reality of combat, straight line attack is important. But you also have to have the curve line attack, such as a hook or uppercut. Okay, so we do have that in the Wen Chun system. Where do you find that? In the textbook. Textbook is what the form is. So in Tam Q, we have some of the curve technique, such as uppercut. Okay. From the forms, this is called Tao Kun, uppercuts. Uh, and as well as some of the diagonal, okay, different diagonal side punches. So those are some of the new hand techniques. The elbows, the uppercuts, and the angle, we'll call parry, outside parry punches. Okay? Later on, as I demonstrate the form, you see if you can identify those techniques. Now, in addition to the offensive techniques, uh, there are some of the new defensive techniques. Okay, one of them is what we we'll call Quan Sao. Okay? Looks like a Bong Sao motion. But in, in essence, you're using these techniques as a way to intercept, as a way to jam your technique. Together, when you have a bong and a tan sao or a wu sao, we call it quan sao. Okay. Also, lan sao. Lan in Chinese means to fence. So you're fencing off a certain space. Obviously, that space is yourself. Okay. You engage with a bong, you come in with strong energy. So you cut your distance, allow the energy to go past you. So you develop a lan sao. So that's also seen in the form. So you have a new technique, quan sao, lan sao. So those are more of a defensive nature. Again, Wen Chun is not a defensive art, because if you're going to do combat, okay, it has to be offensive. You have to take the initiative. So every defensive posture is to set up your opponents so you can expresses your offensive techniques. The last group of new techniques within the Tumkill form I want to discuss is uh, one of my favorite. It's kicking. Okay? So again, in reality of combat, you're going to strike, you're going to grab, you're going to lock, and of course, you're going to kick. When Chen we have a saying, every step is a kick. Every step, not just a simple step forward. In Tom Kill, you only introduce two of the most fundamental kicks. Okay? Now, a lot of time we say fundamental, you look at, oh, this is basic stuff. But fundamental is the essence. Okay? Without those two kicks, your other variations in kicks will lose its effectiveness. Okay? The human body, the strongest part within the legs is the heel. Okay? The heel. You know, every day you walk on your heel. Okay, every time we put our feet down, it's a heel. But that become a very strong structure for us to put the kicks, to, uh, to rely on kicks uh, onto that particular strong structures. So both of the kicks within the Wen Chun, what we call a front kick and a side kick, utilize the heel. And let's look at it uh, from a structural point of view. Okay? The heel is being the contact point Okay, uh, you flex your foot. Okay, so you can expose your heel. Now this is all called zing girl because my body is maintaining straight, straight. And notice my structure is still maintaining the stadium tail structure. In addition to the front kick, you have what we call side kick. Sometimes, if you have opponents from the side and it's within your kicking distance, then side kick becomes appropriate. Okay, or you can turn and then kick him with front kick. Depends on the time and space. Depends on the situations. Okay, so front kick and side kick both are fundamentally. It covers the boundaries for the kicking. So side kick, okay, uh, when we practice side kick, you can start like a front kick, step, kick, okay, with a front kick. Same thing. When you do side kick, step, kick. So this is dealing with the body. Okay, uh, turning, so we call that side kick, because in essence, come from the side. Now you notice I've been kicking low, never above my waist. Okay, because again, economy of motion. You don't want to kick above that in a real situation. It's just like, I probably is not going to use my hand to punch somebody's knee. 
there's always time or place for everything, but you have to maintain the principle of economy of motion. So we have a saying in Wing Chun, we never kick above the waist, okay? It's for safety factors as well as for economy of motion, okay? Um, going back to the structure, side kick, when you do a side kick with the heel exposed, with all the joints straight, so all your energy is being expressed at the final heel, the expression, the energy coming out from the heel. So again, it's one of the most strongest techniques in martial arts. All system of martial arts has side kick. So front kick, quick, short, powerful. Side kick is one of the long extension that you can do within the Wing Chun systems. Okay, let's review some of the new techniques being introduced in the Tom Kill. Okay, again, everything began with a proper stance. Okay, side stance, this is Yao Ma, Zhou Ma. Then you have a back stance. Okay, simply that means your orientation is facing to the side. So you have a front and a back position. When your orientation is right and left, then you don't have a front and back, you only have right and left. So you have two type of stances, the side stance and the back stance. But in structure, they're the same. Then again, we'll go into the footwork. Footwork, you have bracing, outside bracing, inside bracing. Okay, after bracing, you have to learn how to move laterally. Okay, step slide for quick advances or for strong energy, large steps. You have your build ma, which the back foot crosses the front foot, taking a full step. Build ma. Okay, so uh, fundamental steps allow you to start to utilize your feet. Mobility is most important. If you can't move, you can't deliver your. Uh, offensive or defensive capabilities, okay? Now some of the offensive hand we have, new technique, Tai Zhang, Tao Kun, Siu Kun, diagonal punch, okay? Um, straight punch, you've seen it in Sinem Tao. Uppercut being introduced, outside parry being introduced here. So they represent different angle of attack. Okay, some of the defensive hand, Quan Zhao, Lan Zhao, Lan Zhao. So Quan Zhao, Lan Zhao. Then last, we're talking about kicks. You have a fundamentally front kick, then you have a side kick. Front and the side. So those are the fundamental technique uh, as a, something new that you can play with in the computer system. Now you have seen the Tomkyu form with regular speed, okay, with regular energy. Uh, let's look at it one section at a time and break it down into more details. Okay? The beginning, same 
is Selenium Tau. Open up of EG Camille Ma. Now in Selenium Tau, you draw the hand down, crosses the center line, bring your hands up to the middle gate, pull back. In Tom Q, if you notice, there's a slight difference. Hands down, but it has an inward rotation. Okay? Because now that you are learning how to develop it into two hand the Quan Sao system, you must learn how to develop the flexibility in the elbow. So the opening expresses that. Okay, now beginning stage, your punches come here, then goes out. Okay, now that you have passed at that level, so wherever your fist is, should be able to fire out from wherever the starting position is. So from here, it shoots out. So more natural, okay? But it's still elbow down, straight punch, okay? So that's like the beginning variations, okay? After the punch, you have a double biu sao, or zam sao, okay? Zam in Chinese means rest. You're basically resting your hands onto your opponent's bridge, okay? I will show you the application later. So after biu sao, then you sink into hao ma, Right back stance with the elbow technique. Left back stance with the elbow technique. Okay? Right back stance with the elbow. The next, build sao up to your higher gait. Then sink the elbow into double tan sao. Pa, 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 palm, palm, palm. Okay? Then comes over with the lan sao. Quan sao, lan sao. Quan sao, lan sao, quan sao. Then from here, notice my hand is not on my center. It's by my elbows. Drop the elbow, pull the energy back, and punch at the same time. Okay? Okay, now we're going to talk about section two. Okay, begin with a back stance, lan sao. Then it's a kao sao, front kick, quan sao with a side step. And this is where the token, the uppercut, then folks out, back. And repeat same thing on the side. Lan sao, kao sao, zing ge, kuan sao, kuan sao, with a side step, kuan ma, cao kun, folks sao, chun sao, back. Okay? Now, this time, you see the form is not just turning now. This time, you actually see the motions. Okay, your body actually moving, okay? So it's even more important that you maintain your body structures. That's again searching. You're searching for those identity of a good structure. So you're not gonna be stepping one and then two like this, okay? Or you're not gonna be um, having your hands too far and one time having your hands too close. So the self-structure, okay, the body mechanics has to be consistent. That is one of the most important things that you have to search for. Third section. Kick. Okay, this is called Tai Bong Sao. Okay, in Tom Kyo, you have a low Bong Sao. In Sinum Tao, you have a high Bong Sao. Tan. Step slide. Tai Bong Sao. Tai Bong Sao. From here, double jut. You notice my foot, the timing. It's the same time with the hand. So I'm using my whole body to express the hand technique. Again, you're using the whole body unity. Okay? The whole body pushes up. Everything is done with the whole body. Front kick, big ma, low bong sao. Okay? Consistently with the same speed for proper timing training. One. One. So you're not going to be doing this. One. Two, three, right? Okay, the timing will be off. Okay? One. Jut sao with the whole body. Push up with the whole body. Now next, you have uh, two kicks. There's actually two variations. Okay? Grandmaster Yiman, when he does his thumb kill form, what he does is called facing and a front kick. And comes down with a bracing stance. Okay, called Dou Ying Zeng Girl. Dou Ying means uh, facing, then get front kick. So looks like a side kick because he's turning. But actually, if you break it down, it's turn, kick, and down. 
So in essence, it's a front kick. There's a second variation you can do. It's actually 45 degrees. You look at the target, side kick, and then it comes down. So you can either do a front kick with a turning, or you can do a side kick. Let's watch that again. Okay, front kick with a facing. Side kick. Gums out, gums out, punch, punch, finish. So you see the kicks have those two variations there. Okay. Um, the last part is three gums out. Now in the cinnamon towel gums out, you have a straight down motion. Again, that's more the developmental stage. You learn how to channel that energy down, learn how to relax, okay, and then also train your shoulder. Now, more of an application, you must have a proper angle for the gums out. Okay, so those are some of the details within Tom Gill. So what I'd like to do now is uh, introduce my assistant, Jeremy Rorock. He is my assistant in the museum as an instructor, but he also he's a senior certification instructor under the Yip Meng system, uh, certified by the Wen Chen Athletic Association. Uh, so Jeremy, going to demonstrate some of the common mistake. Let's go through section one, see some of the things I can point out here. Uh, in combat, in application, what is more important is efficiency. Okay? Right now, if you notice that his weight is in the back foot, so if he were going to strike with the elbow this way, or uh, four energy is going to come into a challenge, it doesn't take too much to do that, because he's not center. So he lost the original idea of stadium tau, maintaining the center. So because the weight is not properly centered. So let's shift that back. Now he has a better structure, because weight is still maintaining the center. Now the structure is strong. Okay. So as we turn and shift, very easy to go outside and become one-sided. Again, our human structure is two-sided, right hand and left hand. So when you turn, you want to maintain your center line. So it's 50-50 weight. Okay, please continue. Okay, so pretty good. So let's have him do a section two. Okay, again, you see his weight is shifted too much to the back. Okay, again, see, in a posture like this, you're telegraphing your opponent the intention. If his weight's in the back, I know for a fact that he can use his front foot to kick, where the back foot is immobilized. So it's better not to give out the intention. When you're going to use the technique, use it with proper timing. That means don't telegraph before you're going to use. So the structure has to maintain neutral. So shift back to 50-50 again, 50-50 way again. Okay, now that was a big mistake there. You notice that we are searching for our proper structure, okay? The space between our hands, okay? He goes out to the proper distance, and he's going to draw his hand all the way back. Now in essence, what he has done is collapse his bridge. In Wen Chen, we have a uh, concept called Tokyo. Tokyo, that means your bridge is being jammed. Right now, he pulled his hand all the way back. So in case his energy is being challenged, he cannot use his hand and bring this hand back out because now it's already collapsed. He must fight his way out. That's force against force, OK? Now, if he would have done it correctly, now see, his elbow is in front of him. He has the leverage to retain his body structure. So make sure you maintain the distance. So the bong sao and the tan sao, let's say he goes to the bong sao, it's the same distance right here, drop to, right. So your elbow cannot be here and then back to here. That's incorrect. So elbow maintaining the same distance. That's very important because you lose your striking ability if your elbow is jammed. So you're going to have to play a wrestling game. Okay, go on.
Oh, look at that. Look at that. Okay. Now he changed his Wen Chen structure again. Okay. So he created a distortion within the space. Now he has no balance. Okay. He lost the original structure. Again, this is the type of thing you're searching for. You got to have proper positions within your hands, within your feet. So please correct that. Okay, third section, let's look at it. Okay, now the little details, okay? You're supposed to maintain your elbow inside of the shoulder. As he's crank his hand down to low bone style, his elbow fly out. In essence, this is already jammed. In essence, this is weak, because I might be engaging him here, and then if his elbow fly out, then this is weak. So this structure cannot stop my punch. Okay, all I have to do is continue to press that problem. So his elbow have to maintain within the shoulder line. Now he can easily deflect me out to the side. So pay attention to the elbows. Right, now the elbow is correct. Right, see, as you can see, the structure of stadium tile is properly maintained as he start to move. That is the bridge that you are searching for. <music> Next, I'd like to demonstrate some of the basic uh, applications from section one. Let's say if he throw me a punch, where I thrust out, where okay, this is more offensive, this is to cut his bridge. Or a thumb, thumb means rest. Let's say he jam my bridge where I want to recover. So you have a technique that simply rotate the energies away from you, then you can put that energy back down, called resting, called zam sao. Okay, you can look at that again. Zam sao. Then you can follow with the elbow, with the elbow strike. That's a sequence you see here. One, two, three. So this is called pai zang. It's one of the basic elbow techniques. Let's look at section two. We have a common technique. Quan ma bong sao, quan ma quan sao, okay? So the purpose of that is to be able to intercept to jam your opponents. At the same time, if the energy is strong, you can redirect. Let's uh, do it from this side. Quan sao, okay? So I'm bracing myself, the both toe pointing same directions. Then right away from the lap sao drill you learn, you can strike him, okay? Or well, sometimes you need to make that slightly adjustments. That's why you have to move your hands and step. So this technique is very effective redirecting. Like I said, you can jam him by stepping forward. Again, follow up, follow up, okay? You can intercept him or you can redirect him. <coughs> Let him pass you, okay? So you must have ability of stepping, slide, and use the hand same time. If you're standing still like this, he punches, then you're doing a hard style, force against force. Okay? So that's some of the application behind this technique right here. Okay? Now this also has a sinking motion. Okay, up and down. Let's say he threw me a punch. Okay. Let's look at section three. Let's this time use a chi saw as an example. If his bridge is very heavy, and he took my center line, okay, vertically, so right now my hand is too low. So I'm not going to give up this space. I'm not going to run because he can hit me. So I have to continue to stick. So when your hand's in trouble, you should stick to get the control back. So this time, rather than try to fight up, uh, try to lift up, then you simply try to go with the energy. From here, low bounce down. So my center line is still shut, so he cannot touch me. So this maintain a low bong sao. Or a simple application, if I punch, he blocks my hand. Okay, low bong sao, and then goes out. So you can see this energy is being simply redirected. Okay, so from a low bong sao point of view. Last, I want to cover kicks. As I kick, my feet and my direction of power is all stepping out. Okay, uh, 
some of the tournament you see, they start out like this with feet apart. <clears throat> okay, a guy charges in, okay, I'm gonna get a point. Now, when you're dealing with small energy, such as a, a quick point, you can get away with it because you're not dealing with a large structure coming at you. You're not being, dealing with the reality of really strong energy. Reality, when you shift your weight in the back, and if he's a linebacker, 250 pounds coming at you, he comes in, where I'm gonna kick him, it's gonna totally knock me off. Okay, that's the reality. So you cannot kick this way and then your body going opposite way. See, if you look at my structure again, see, I'm only going backwards. Okay, inconsistent. Your structure and energy have to go the same directions. So in Wen Chen, we have a, a small structure. If he comes into my space, I'm gonna kick him, is when my feet directions, the whole body is going towards that direction, exactly where I want it, okay? So the energy has to be consistent. So therefore, what you're training here is feet together and kick out, okay? So we have a step, feet together, kick, okay? This kind of brings the concept of what we call, when you kick, your heel have to face each other. At the beginning of the tape, I introduced the kicks. You might have uh, noticed that we have a kick that has two steps. One, two. One, two. So this is a basic exercise to develop a proper angle of attack later on, okay? The heel right now lining up. One, see, the heel line up. The heel actually line up like the first serum tau, EG Kamil Ma. One, two, okay? So this little step helps your body to go towards the direction you wanna go and to increase your distance. If I had a good position here, watch. By maintaining a neutral position, that means the stance is not right or left, okay? It's 50-50, then I can kick left or right. But sometime you're at a distance from here too far, or I want to sidestep, that's when we start to step into our center to make that angle adjust. Or if he comes straight in, I want to step to the side. Allow me to put myself into this position here. So this half a step to the center, allow me to readjust the distance, readjust the angles, okay? And I create a momentum going towards the kick, the direction that I want. One, two, everything's going towards the direction of the kick. Not one, uh, one part of the body going back and one part of the body going in opposite directions. So again, you lose efficiency in terms of energy. So uh, those are the, some of the searching in terms of attribute you're looking for right now. So next, I'd like to gonna go into the attributes. In addition to the coordination, the balance, the mobility uh, that you develop through the moving, okay, you have to learn how to generate power through the whole body. Okay, when you have a body that supports your hands or feet, in essence, in combat, that's what we call a force multiplier, okay? A big guy might be strong. If he just used his arm to punch, it's not as strong as a smaller guy that uses his whole body to punch. So the idea is to generate proper momentum with an efficient way. So that means every motion, you use the whole body. So you have a force multiplier. So let's look at Tom Q. Okay, this is a regular opening. Okay, uh, that slight momentum going up and sink. Okay, you're dealing with up and down. Again, whole body is supporting, okay? How you generate momentum is to use the whole body, okay? If, uh, if he comes in with a strike where I jut with my whole body, then my hands become stronger, okay? When I sink the bridge with my whole horse, become stronger, okay? Same thing, if I was gonna strike him just with the hands or with the whole body, okay? So you have this up and down motions that allow you to become more efficient in power. That's what you see here, okay? Next. Now this is also obvious. Turning is one of the best ways to generate power. 
Okay, imagine a pitcher in baseball, okay, without the momentum, okay, without the rounding and then full turning of the body. So turning can generate a lot of momentum to give you that increase in power. So this also adds the momentum, especially dealing with the elbow strike. Because you're dealing with no space, a short range, you must generate momentum from somewhere else. Here you see it's been generated through the torque of the body. So turning is the only way for humans to generate power, not just up and down. Okay, now there's two parts. You see, in Wen Chun, we have a lot of hand technique. It's a combination, okay? Once you get the momentum started, the next sequence of technique becomes more efficient, okay? It's like a car. The stepping on the gas, initial going is burn most of the gas. So that's why most of our technique goes out in twos or threes to generate that uh, extra momentum, okay? Also, the last part of the form, you see, Jeremy had pull this hand back, and this hand goes out. Same time, because every action, there's a reaction. When this hand goes out and hits the body, there's going to be a reaction coming back. So this hand counteract that reaction. So you, again, you develop proper uh, energy and have a more structure, okay? Because your energy is created properly to counter that reaction of force. So this energy, this hand go back as quick as the hand goes out. So all this has to do with the energy factor which ultimately affects your power. Okay, let's look at section two. Okay, now you see again, every motion of the hands, the body moves simultaneously. Okay. So if you just use the hand without motion of the body, your body is not being utilized. Again, the torque of the hip, the circular motion, generate actual power. Okay, third section. So now this is a big mark. So again, okay, a strike with the hands is not as good as a strike with the whole body. So he's moving along with his technique. Again, how we generate momentum? Up and down, turning, obviously it's forward as well. Okay, you see again, his body have a motion of up and down to give more power to his techniques. Okay, moving as his hand is going, the whole body coordinates. Okay, turning again, turning again. Okay, very good. Now, there are only so many ways that the human body can generate power. Obviously, up, down, rotational, forward, sometimes back, okay? You always go along with the energy, okay? So in Tom Kill, actually, we utilize all of them, okay? Because we want to achieve efficiency, you use the whole body for every strike or every defense that you're going to be applying. Uh, so that's some of